precious and Father, we thank you for this day, this hour. We thank you for these that are gathered here under the sound of my voice. That you are the author, the finisher of our faith. We thank you for this opportunity to come, stand behind the sacred desk, and bring the word of God to the people. We're asking you to allow this word to educate, illuminate, and change lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And we just thank you for this opportunity. And we just believe you, Lord God, that you are moving through us. Touch in spaces where no human can go. And we just thank you for this. We thank you for each and every one being blessed. We thank you for the healings. We thank you for the testimonies of victory. That someone will say, look what the Lord has done. And we just thank you for this. Bless now your people. In Jesus' name, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. 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 Go with me to uh, the letter of Paul to the Colossians, Colossians 1. Colossians 1. Colossians 1. We're beginning at the ninth verse. For this reason, since the day we heard it, and I'm reading from the NSRB, we have not ceased praying for you and asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord fully pleasing to him as you bear fruit in every good work and as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be made strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power. And may you be prepared to endure everything with patience while joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of, in, of the saints of light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. So far, the scriptures. Our thought for today is will. Will power. In the book of Colossians, Paul writes to the church at Col Colossae, a church he had not visited, which was founded by Epaphras, a co-laborer of Paul, who Paul thought very highly of, as evidenced by his greeting to him. Paul wanted to encourage the church to remain strong. Paul takes time to commend the church on its faith and lets them know that he is praying for their strength and growth in Christ. In our text, Paul explains the focus of his prayer that the church gains knowledge of understanding God's will through spiritual wisdom and understanding. Now this is an awesome prayer in that the things Paul prays for is comprehensive, meaning that it covers many bases, if you will, that a believer needs to mature in God and to be successful in his daily walk. You don't, I don't get higher in God just by doing the same old things daily. Amen. What we have to do is grow. Those who have children know that children need certain things to grow. When they're babies, they need a certain formula. They need certain foods. And even as they age and they grow, 
they still need more because they have developing bones. They have developing bodies. And when we get older, there are things that we need in our bodies mm -hmm. to assist us in our aging process. Yeah. Amen? Amen. I've heard say that we're all deficient pretty much in vitamin D. Mm -hmm. So that all the sun that you get may not help you enough to get all of the vitamin D you need. Uh -huh. So there are certain things, vitamins, nutrients, whatever it is to help us get stronger, become more. We should not take for granted that our confession of faith and acceptance of Christ as our Savior closes the door on our needs and not seek to get closer to God. By prayer, by reading the word, and seeking to live right, we have a formula that we utilize in order to get closer to God. If you don't have a prayer life, how do you expect to hear from God? How do you expect those needs to be met? With an active prayer life, you are beginning to touch God where God is. You and I have to get there in order to experience all that God has for us. But if you wake up every day, you don't give thanks. You wake up every day, you don't acknowledge God. You wake up every day and think that you've done it all. You're missing out on so much. Amen. If we're not trying to be better people every day, by doing what the Lord wants, we're missing out. Uh -huh. I was talking to a friend last night, just talking about what I preached a couple of weeks ago, no space for cheap grace. That if we just say, well, God's going to forgive me anyway, why do I have to keep trying to do right? We cheapen God's grace. Yeah. Yeah. And we make it sort of so we've got to do more in order to get more. Because uh -huh. surely when you start going through something, you start calling out for God. Yeah, amen. That's right. Oh, God. Oh, where is God now? Where is God now? Haven't you been praying all along? Yeah. Mm. You still go through, but you know that your advocate was right there. Uh -huh. That your answer to prayer was right there. Instead of God saying, who are you? Your voice sounds familiar. But I haven't heard from you in so long. Hmm. And somebody might say, who that? Who that? So we don't want to get there when God comes back at us and says, who that? I was watching the Little Rascals last week. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got to get better at reaching out to God on a consistent basis. Amen. First, let us examine the will of God for our lives. The will of God is the plan and design for believers. The will of God takes us to places where God strategically has for us to be. To meet people, to play a part, or be where we can be out of harm's way. We might not want to be in that place on our own or understand why we are there, but when the Lord gets ready, you've got to move. Ask Moses about the will of God. Moses became a reluctant savior for Israel. And in Exodus 4, he explains to God the many reasons why he is not the right man for the job to carry out God's will to lead Israel out of Egypt. But God has taken Moses out to the desert for 40 years to prepare him to carry out God's will that Israel might be delivered. And who better than Moses who had lived on the other side and knew what it meant to be free. So sometimes we have to experience a thing to be able to help somebody else 
go through. If you've been rich all your life, your money that you throw at somebody to say this will solve your problem does not resolve the issue that you can empathize with them because you've been where they've been. So instead of being empathetic, because I've been there and I know how it is, you are sympathetic. And few people want sympathy when they're going through. They want to be recognized as, you get me, don't you? You've been where I've been. Can, can you just feel like I feel? So, then we can talk to Jonah about being sentimental against his strong disapproval. To bring repentance to a nation that was getting out of hand. These brothers thought that the will of God was tied to their desires and their ideas of what they should be or what they should be doing. But the will of God, as Paul laid it out, deals with wisdom, knowledge, and the understanding that if you want to get it right, you have to turn your will over to God and become a selfless servant of the Lord. My will, if I decide I don't want to do a thing, I don't have to do a thing. But if I want to see something greater from God and try to do it my way, it doesn't work out too well. I've got to turn my will over to the will of God so that God can get inside of this thing and operate the way God can. Because see, I've been known to mess up stuff. I've been known to speak too soon. I've been known to speak too loudly. But if I follow the will of God, and God says, Why do you talk while you're amongst the wicked? Keep quiet. Not now. And not even later. I've got somebody else to do your talking for you. But you gotta know that. Be in the will of God to understand it. On the subject of will, there are all kinds of will. Your will, out of the will of God, the permissive will of God, and the perfect will of God. Out of the will is simple. God is in it, and you're committing a crime with the people you will know that will land you in trouble. Or that God has already warned you about, but somehow God couldn't possibly talking to you. And you know better than God. I know him all my life, Lord. He wouldn't do that to me. Oh, yeah? Guess again. The permissive will of God allows you to enter into situations because the situations will teach you a lesson of how to wait. Such as someone you might check out because he or she has been built to your specifications. And you say, I just need to meet him or go out on a day or two, please, Lord. <laughs> and God and God's permissive will will allow it. Maybe allow it. But be careful what you wish for. You may get it. And though you thought that he or she met all the specifications, like a Toyota, there was a recall, and that model may have to go back. The permissive may allow you to get a job because it pays the bills. But it is not the job that will allow you to maximize your talents and make the impact that you are capable of. You see, you've got gifts and talents that are right for a certain place. But they may not be right for every place. Amen. Because there may be somebody who's sitting on the top who does not want you to progress. Uh -huh. There may be a system in place that will not allow a person with your talent to do better than you could do. Yes. The system may hold you back. And you have to get in the will of God to get to the right place where God can allow you to bloom where you have been planted. See, sometimes we, we, we spend a lot of time idle or idling. There's a, there's, a, there's a thing where you sit in your car and you got the car cut off. 
And that's called idling. And while you're idling, you're not moving. You're just sitting there. And the same way in life, sometimes your talent will allow you to get to a place, but your talent will not allow you to get even greater because somebody else feels that their talent is greater than your talent and mess you up. So you've got to know how to wait on God. The perfect will of God puts you and the person right that you are looking for at that time in the same place at the same time. Okay? Although she may not be the model you were looking for, there's something about him or her that you can't get out of your mind. And you say, I thought I wanted a bad boy. Well, that was not God's plan for God's door. No, this is not the end to your yang. This is the one who will help you, complete you, and help you get to the places I have planned for you. You don't think that God has called you just to leave you out there hanging, do you? Why would you bring me out here just to leave me? That's not God's plan. <laughs> Romans. Let me not skip ahead. The will of God will not lead you where the power of God will not sustain you. Okay? And let's try that again. The will of God will not lead you where the power of God will not sustain you. So God's not taking you to a place just to leave you there to drive. If God puts you on the vine, the vine is there to sustain you, to give you nutrients, to help you grow, not to dry up and die. In Romans 9, 14 through 17, I just want to read that briefly. It says, what then are we to say? Is there injustice on God's part? By no means, for he says to Moses, I will have mercy on them whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on them who I have compassion. So it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who shows mercy. For the scripture says to Pharaoh, I have raised you up for the very purpose of showing my power in you so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. What is that really saying? Hmm. Well, there are times when we believe that God's will has granted power to our enemies. Have you ever felt like that? My enemy seems to have more going on than I do. Okay? This text in Romans speaks of Moses and how God spoke to him to let him know that it was God's will to raise up a Hebrew slave to come against Pharaoh. And though it may seem that I am on Pharaoh's side at times, remember, despite your perception, I have mercy on whom I will have mercy and compassion on whom I will have compassion. God also let Pharaoh know that even though you believe you have power, it is really my power that is manifested in you, and then it will be my will being done to show others my plan. So you've only got temporary access to what I've allowed you to have access to, Pharaoh. But after a while, you're going to find out that I just, I just used you a little bit so that we would then be able to understand that when people look on you and they realize that you were so great and your army was so strong, but that, that people that came out of nowhere had God on their side. 
The power of God moves the stubborn, cantankerous folks out of your way. The power of God creates space for us to use our talents when it looked like everything was set and there was no room for you. Proverbs 18, 16 says that a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. The power of God puts you where you are not supposed to be in the eyes of man because the will of God has sent you there. See, uh, it, sometimes it looks like it's been set up one way, but God's got a way to work you in. God's got a way to bring you in the places that you weren't necessarily invited. God's got a way to do some things that make you go, how did I get here with all of these other folks? All of these other folks got all these degrees. All of these other folks have a lot of money. All of these other folks come from wealthy families and they come from prestigious schools. And look at me. Well, look at you. You are the child of God. Look at you. You pray to God. Look at you. You are diligent in learning and trying to grow and trying to understand and trying to be all that God wants you to be. And all you have to do is that. All you have to do is make up your mind that you want to be in God's will. All you have to do is make up your mind that whatever God has for me is for me. What all you got to do is reach back and then say, Lord, have your way. I went down the street you told me to go. I did all the things you told me to do. Lord, have your way. Show me your will. I've been running things on my own will, but my will is not enough. I need you, Lord, to do the things yes. in me that you want to do. Put me where you want me to be. Make me what you want me to be. Show me what you want me to see. Will you do that? The power of God blasts his way through discrimination and injustice and takes us where our ancestors could not go. The power of God transforms us into vessels able to stand up and be counted. Mm -hmm. Where once upon a time we'd have been counted out. The will of God causes others to look at us and invite us to the table when seemingly we would never have gotten an opportunity. And the will of God says to those who don't even understand why they're being used or how they're being used, just let that one in. Let that one stay in. And you thought, oh, well, they will never look at me. But God's got a way. Yeah. God's got a way. God's got a way of bringing us above and beyond where we think we should be or where others thought you should be. You just have to look and you have to live in the will of God. God has the ability to move us from one location or occupation where the will of God has reserved a spot just for you. The power of God places you in alignment where the will of God sent you for preparation or set you up for what you thought was a chance meeting. I don't believe in coincidence and I don't believe in luck because if you search deep enough, you can find God in the midst of it all. I don't know what happened. I just got lucky. And that's why I'm here.
person like me will be coming from a certain location and won't make it. But the devil is a liar. I come. I come from where God has sent me. And that might not be the desired location. Why do you know that? Because Jesus came from Nazareth. And somebody asked the question, what good thing can come out of Nazareth? Oh my God, you got a joke that hold on to God. Walk with God. Trust in God to allow the will of God to move you to places that you never thought you'd be. To move you in the spaces that said you didn't belong there. Somebody's trying to get into a country club. Well, I'm not trying to get into your club. I know what God has for me. It is for me. And if you want to be in your club, you can close the door. You can pull the curtain. But guess what? I'm going to walk up to the door. And I'm going to say, I'm here. Watch the doors open. Watch the curtain be pulled back. Because the king's kid is right here. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. If God wants you to be rich, then God gives you the tools to make it happen. Not a dollar and a dream. Stop looking for your will to make it sustain you. When you know you haven't consulted the Lord for fear that you will come face to face with the truth, that you are wrong and you need to apologize. Ask for forgiveness or forgive. Because sometimes we have to humble ourselves in the face of God and in the face of man in order that we might move on. Get your will out of the way. Walk in the will of God. Get your will under subjection and allow God to make it work for you. Go in the knowledge of God's will for you. Knowing that the 